Good morning, participants. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. So today morning, we shall sir. be taking on the practical part of arithmetic analysis. We'll be using a software called Mega for doing this phylogenetic analysis. So these are the things that we are going to do today. First of all, we shall download COX1 gene, that is Metrocom C oxidase gene. Conserve sequences in eukaryotes. So we shall try to download the toxin sequences of some mammalian species. And along with that, we can also download the same gene sequence from non mammalian species. Because we know, yesterday we discussed that for doing the phylogenetic analysis, we need to have a sequence which can be considered as outlier or outgroup, which is not related to the other sequences. So we shall use one non mammalian COX1 gene sequence as outlier. Then we will place all these sequences in one notepad file, and then we shall go for multiple sequence alignment. Multiple sequence alignment can be done by using MEGA itself because Clustel W is embedded in MEGA itself or otherwise you can also do the multiple sequence alignment by using some other tools like Clustel X2. So we'll show both the procedures and then thereafter by looking into the alignment data, we shall de decide about the method to be used for phylogenetic analysis. And then by using MEGA, we will go for phylogenetic analysis. After doing the analysis, when we get the three, then the next task we will do to validate the phylogenetic tree by the method of bootstrapping. Then after everything is done, we shall try to interpret, interpret the results by looking into the phylogenetic tree. And then thereafter, we'll save the image file so that it can be stored in your computer and can be also used in your publications. So these are the steps that we are going to follow. Then today we shall be using these databases and tools, first of all, for Obtaining the sequences, we will go to NCBI gene database because we want to download the complete gene sequence of COX1. Then we shall store them in Notepad and then we shall use MEGA 6.06 .06 for both multiple sequence alignment as well as phylogenetic analysis. Alternatively, we shall also use Cluster X2 for multiple sequence alignment. And two files for today's practicals have been already shared with you through WhatsApp. I think those who want to learn practically, they'll be following me and they have probably already downloaded both these sequence files, box one and test. So let us start then. So first of all, we'll go to NCBI website. In NCBI website, we will select the database, Zine database. We can download nucleotide sequences 
or protein sequences from many different databases within NCBI. Say we can download it from nucleotide sequences, from gene sequence database or genome sequence database. But we shall today try to download the sequences from the gene database because we want to download the whole gene sequence of COX-1 gene. So we have selected gene database. Then we shall search for COX-1. We will not select any species. Simply we will click on SARS. So many sequences have been downloaded. Now we will only select some sequences which are of mammalian origin. I shall not download all the sequences freshly because it will take a lot of time. Already I have distributed to you a file containing around 12 gene sequences of COX-1 from different mammalian species that we'll be using. But only I'll show you how to download one single sequence. Okay. Say for example, first of all, we down download a sequence of human being. So this is the cytochrome C oxidase subunit one homo sapiens. So this is the human gene. So we will click on this sequence because now the summary is only available here, we do not have the sequence. We need to have the sequence. So first of all, we will click here. So from gene sequence, if you want to download data pertaining to the sequences proper, you have to follow this procedure. You cannot download many sequences together. Unlike from nucleotide sequences, I shall show you that also briefly. If you download partial gene sequences from nucleotide sequence data database, then you can download many sequences in the FASTA format together. But from gene sequence, you are to download one by one. Now this is the gene map of the COX-1 gene of human. So for downloading, as I showed yesterday, we shall have to go towards bottom. Then we have to find this reference assembly of data. So here, this is the reference assembly of the COX-1 sequence of human. We have to click on FASTA because we want to see the FASTA sequence. So it will display the gene sequence in FASTA format. So this is the gene sequence in FASTA format. Now to download it, either we can copy and paste it in notepad or you can go to this option send to option if you take send to option then click here click on file then it is asking what is the format you need pasta is already highlighted it's okay it is selected then you just simply click on create file okay the file has been downloaded here as a sequence dot pasta automatically it will create a file in the FASTA format using notepad. So this is already downloaded to your computer. You can find it in your download folder. If you go to your download folder of your computer, you can get this sequence FASTA. So this is already downloaded. You can open it with notepad. So this will appear like this. Okay. This is the notepad file. So the name is sequence. You can store it in some other way, means by renaming it, renaming it and changing the location. You can click here file, then save as change the name of the sequence. Instead of sequence, we write COX1, suppose. Participants, please mute your microphones. So I am 
saving it on desktop. Okay. There's Cox one. Now I, if I save it, then it will be saved. If I click save, I'll not save it now, but rather I'll show you how to download the sequence directly by copy and paste. Okay. For that, you are to select the sequence, copy it by control C or by right clicking, then clicking on copy, then open a notepad file by going into the startup button to try to find out where your notepad is. It will be within Windows, Windows accessories. Notepad is a Windows accessory. You can find Notepad from Windows accessories. So then you can paste it here. So the same thing will happen. It is also a Notepad file. So now the name is very long. So for file so identity, you, you will have to change the screen. That is not coming. So you see here, now it is available. So the name is very long, so you can shorten it by renaming it as say Cox1 underscore human. So now I'm coming back. Uh, so this is the file from where we have downloaded and then we got this file pasted to the notepad as Cox human. Okay. Then by going back to the NCBI, by going back to NCBI, We can further download the sequences of other mammals. So I'm clicking on back button. Again back so that I can go back to the original page from database that you have downloaded containing all sequences of Cox1. So then suppose you want to download this boss toras sequence boss toras means exotic cattle then you similarly you click on cox1 and then download the cox1 gene sequence of boss toras by following this same process i'll not show it but after so this is the Cox1 file in my desktop. So if you open it, then you will, if, and you enlarge it, then you get all these sequences. You see, I have, did not download the human sequence, but this sequence, uh, this file contains boss torus, then chimpanzee, and many other mammalian like pygmy chimpanzee, cat, sheep, frog, vampire bat. No leopard. In your file, probably instead of food frog, you might be having gecko sequence. That is Chinese gecko. There is a reptile. So that is uh, the frog and the gecko sequence are downloaded as outliers. Because as I say, the sequences should not only contain the target sequences which are to be aligned and analyzed, but it should also contain an outlier or outgroup. So now we have this file. First to go for sequence alignment, multiple sequence alignment, then we will go for polygenetic analysis. So for that, we have to have this software called MEGA. So already when you have 
after your software, it has created one shortcut on your desktop. So after installation, you get this shortcut in the desktop and you find it from the program files. So open the Mega 6 software. So this is the home page of Mega software. But let me clarify one thing. If you download the sequence directly from the website by using send to option, then it will create a FASTA file automatically in the notepad, which is Otherwise, the original text file is not so can you repeat the process one more once more since a back because i have uh, missed one Okay, we were here. That means we wanted to open the DNA file. We click on DNA because these are DNA sequences, Cox1 sequences. Then we'll go to data, open. Data we should open from a file. So retrieve sequences from file. Okay, and this is the file which contains our sequences. We'll click on Cox1. So these are the sequences which have been retrieved from the file. As I said, there are 13 sequences representing the Cox1 gene of different mammalian species, including here I have kept two outliers, wood frog and gecko, but in your file, what we shared yesterday contains only gecko, no wood frog. Okay, so now the, our first task will be to go for alignment. Okay. So let me increase the size of this window so that you can see it properly. So you see, there is one option here, alignment. So you go to the menu alignment, then you align by using cluster W. Align by using cluster W. It has got two uh, multiple sequence alignment tools within Mega. One is cluster W and the other is muscle. So we use cluster W. So align by cluster W. Say a sequence, I think this one. So select all, whether you want to select all, just click it. select all sequence. And then it's showing parameters for alignment. We use parameters, we use the default parameters only. Okay, then just click OK. By using cluster W. Whether the sequences are by and large similar or dissimilar. You can start the I said earlier, star means identical. 
identity and the non identity by looking into here so where there are no stars means there is no identity and the basic color can show here see here so you see by the lot of many gaps are here stars are only few that means if we go back to our uh, previous lesson right, that the uh, beginning of our surface and i hope that uh, so all the things can be based on our sequence alignment data First question we ask is: Is there any strong sequence event? If the answer is yes, we go to the question. If the answer is no, then we ask: Is there a clearly obvious sequence event? If the answer is yes, we go to the question. If there are no obvious clarity, then we go to the question. So, so now our question will be whether a large-scale similarity exists. The answer is certainly no. The large-scale similarity is not there. So we cannot make assumptions. Whether there are clearly obvious similarity among sequences, then we have to see again to the next sequence and find out if. In some cases, very equivalent similarity exists. So, by looking into the alignment throughout the length, we can say the answer is yes. Because you see, in some cases, there are clear equivalent similarity across places, except for the gap. You look from in many places, clear equivalent similarity exists. Similarly, where you see this place, if you see all R A A A across the space, the gap and so on, clear equivalent similarity for short segments of the sequence exists. Although there are not similarities, there are certain sequences where clear equivalent similarity are missing. So our next question is that as yes, far as we go, the distance matrix method. And if we do not find any clearly recognizable similarity, even for a short space, all the sequences are different from each other. Then we go for the maximum likelihood method. Now, based on our alignment score, either our best method will be either the neighbor joining method or EPG or which are called distance. Matrix method or distance based method. So on this sequence alignment, we have decided that we go for distance based method. So that is the equity and and this alignment file. Now we will send it and then again we open it with error. So that's to it. So you are seeing like this. Yes, it is probably stored in some as top swan. We say this. Now we have to back up it. So this is the alignment file. Then we have to do file open file session. We have to do open a file or session. Or file is not so. This time we open this notepad file or other file. We open this file. This is alignment file created by the alignment file mega. As I said, this file that we have created. So we open this file. Now we are asking how do you like to open this MAS file? Whether it is for analysis or alignment, alignment is already done, so we click on analyze. So analyze there. So the file is open here. If you click on close data, then it is closed. So you take your cursor on this, then you find the file. This is the analysis. Some dots are created, and whenever there is this similarity, the nucleotide is so. Whenever there is similarity, the nucleotide is replaced by dot. So this is the alignment. So we might not close it, but it is there. Now we go to the analysis. For that, we will go to this option. Then there are many options of using different types of analytic analysis. So as I have said, we will be selecting distance matrix method, that is neighbor joining or EPG joining. What are there? So as we will neighbor joining, first of all, we will try neighbor joining. We would like to use currently active data. Yes, already currently active data is already uploaded. So we can. So the parameters we say. So I will only say based on the structure in your computer. You are doing the analysis. So none. That is, it may appear as none. Based on the none. So you have never used it. So you can do bootstrap by clicking this down menu. So click on bootstrap method. Then it is asking number of bootstrap replications. How many bootstrap replications do you want? As I said, again we should go for bootstrapping by replicating it 500 to 1000 times. So we have kept it at 500 minimum. You can change this also by increasing it. Here you can go for 300, 500, 600, 1000. Whatever you need. Let us keep it as 500. Okay. Need to change another parameter. Just you click on. Then this is the mega copy screen. If I can analyze, that means few minutes we give you the result of the analysis using mega journey. Yes, yeah. Can you repeat it? Uh, after opening the file, mega. 
on the other bag i'll show you for example this for analysis by the sequences and after storage data you see uh, branches appearing there are some figures appearing here 160 and how many type how many times you see calculation same branches are appearing in the place entry okay how many times times this is at the same place so if you say 100 means reliable reliability is high so the person should have to get to is a clear and the pairing here so you are getting here in bootstrapping size for example here the score for the percentage is less than process so all as i said if the process is more than 70% bootstrapping score there is a good reliable tree but if it says are so less bootstrap value probably there is something wrong either in selection tree or the selection of the method or in the original data so normally you take rcl sequences and you take other sequences actually you get a bootstrap score and these two are the same they are so lesser score here you see 48 and 53 i have included here chinese pangolin also so here we can use as outliers i think phylogenetic to well because they are some other species related them there may be some more other species sequences and they they do have very close less sequence phylogenetic tree let us as i said i have to this one thing so i am going to this okay i am going to this so that i can upload it so for that we shall have to now bring the data once again so what i have to do i we start follow we will click on a on a file or session we know where it is we have our file is on the desktop we will go to desktop this is the notepad by the way and this is the file so can i am file just open it double click on now it is asking do you like to open this ms file whether for alignment or for analysis <coughs> so we are going to analyze them not for alignment so we will click on analyze <laughs> so then the files are file is open here okay our file is here if you click on close data then it will automatically close immediately so now our file is already available we can go for phylogenetic analysis we will click on phylogeny okay last time we did with neighbor joining this is one of the difficult of this method participant please i am requesting you again to mute your microphones otherwise again it is creating problem so we will go to phylogeny then this time we will go to construct phylogeny by using upgma method because as i said we decided to take on the distance matrix method two methods are available one is neighbor joining and the other is upgma we will test with upgma also click on upgma yes then same thing bootstrap method 500 times we will click compute so after few minutes it will give us the phylogenetic tree so this is the phylogenetic tree given by upgma now you see the bootstrap scores here although these four are 100 we are getting lesser score like 29 earlier the minimum score was 48 but here we are getting 29 43 54 so most of the places they are having lesser score so better we will accept the method in this case because we have applied two methods of distance scoring we found better validity score with neighbor joining so we shall rely more on the neighbor joining method here with this data and we will take that particular tree as the best tree okay so this is ep geometry but earlier we had the neighbor joining tree so that gave us better bootstrap values and therefore we will consider that one let me show once again 
So for that, I'll minimize this UPGMA. Again, go for another analysis. File the knee, neighbor joining. Yes. Compute. So and we'll, we'll side by side compare the bootstrap scores of neighbor joining and UPGMA. That will give us the clue which one is more reliable in this case with the set of data that we are using. As I said that already we tested both the methods, we found better scores in case of neighbor joining and that will be taken as the final phylogenetic tree in this case because it is showing better bootstrap values, validity is more. Okay, now you see here the minimum score is 49 and uh, most of the other places these scores are higher okay so we'll take this one as the final so you can compare side by side bring the other one this is the original one you see here so by comparing both we find that here minimum value is 29 43 and fewer values are there but here most of the values are more than 50 or nearing 50 so this is a better one so we'll take this one that is your the one that is given by neighbor joining analysis so this is the final that we got now how to interpret so from this phylogenetic tree we can interpret that boss toras and zebu cattle are closest to each other among all the sequences because the length of the branches are lowest okay the length of the branch as i said indicate the distance means the dissimilarity score between the two sequences so therefore they are the closest relatives although they are both cattle one is exotic cattle one is indian zebu cattle so they do have little differences if they are completely identical then you will not get these horizontal lines. You would have got only this perpendicular line and both would have been placed as two leaves in the same perpendicular line. There would have been no horizontal line. This horizontal line shows that there is little difference between the two. That means some mutations are there in the COX-1 gene sequence of Bostoras and Jebukati. There is a difference. Then they are closer to sheep than to deer. Similarly, the, these four sequences are making one cluster. Bostoras, zebu cattle, sheep and white deer, they are making one cluster. They are in a group. Okay. And they do differ distantly to some other cluster. This is another cluster. This cluster is made up of dog, cat and snow leopard. You see, they belong to canine and feline species. So canine and feline species, they are close to each other. Dog, cat and snow leopard, particularly cat and snow, peer, snow leopard, both belonging to the feline family. So they are showing closest relative. Then they are little closer to dog than that of other species. Here you see chimpanzee and pygmy chimpanzee they are showing close similarity rather than others. If in your case you have downloaded human sequences, probably you could have found human sequence also within this particular cluster because human sequences show high level of similarity to chimpanzee. As you know that at the level of the genome sequence, human genome is 98.7% similar to the chimpanzee genome. That is why we say that chimpanzee were our forefathers. Then similarly, vampire bat and Chinese pangolin are closer to each other. Then wood frog and gecko, as expected, are making two outliers, means they are quite distant from others. And out of all these sequences, gecko is the hardest, means it is having the highest differences with others. And this is shown as the root 
of this particular phylogenetic tree. So gecko is the root, means all other species have emerged in evolution after gecko. Because we have taken into consideration the COX-1 gene sequence, which is a conserved sequence. From this analysis, you can say that in the evolutionary history, gecko appeared first. Then in, at some time in evolution, it has given rise to wood frog. Then thereafter, all other species have come to earth. Okay? So this is a kind of interpretation that you can give. So here, to explain it, we can say that wood frog and gecko in this phylogenetic tree are distinct outliers or outgroups, and all the other mammalian species are creating one, two, three, four clusters, four clusters, and there are some subclusters within them. Bostoras and Jebucatl is making one single clan along with seed. And similarly, cat and snow leopard is all making one clan. So, like this way, you can go on explaining and writing. Now, this is the tree with the bootstrap value. But if you want to get the final bootstrap consensus tree, you click here. This is the final consensus tree. Some people publish the consensus tree without the bootstrap values, but some people publish the original tree with the bootstrap values in the final competition. Prefer preferably, you should give the consensus tree. So how to store it in your computer now and how to shift it to the publication, MS Word file or some other files. So for that, you have to go now to image. In the menu, there is one menu called image. You click on image, then you can Either save it as PNG file, PDF file, etc., or you can clip it to clipboard. You can copy it to clipboard. Once you copy it to clipboard, you can paste it anywhere. Suppose you are already having a MS Word, an MS Word file, having your publication. We have already written the text. Then you can open the MS Word file, and then from the clipboard, you can paste it into MS Word in the place where you want to put it in your text file. Or you can store it as an image file, either PNG file or even as PDF file by going into the image options. So here I have opened one MS Word file. Then in this MS Word file, I can paste it, Control V. Already it is in the clipboard, so I can paste it here. Then this is pasted, pasted usually as a Fixer, and you can adjust the size according to your necessity. So, this is the fixer that we have pasted into the MS Word. So, by this way, you can again store it in a as a part of the MS Word file. So, I'll not save it now. I'll say no. So I think up till now it is clear to you. Is there any question? If you have got any query, you can. Yes, ask. sir. Yeah. Otherwise, the race part. I sir, I, yeah. I have two questions, sir. One is that the difference in the two tree is that uh, in the first case where it is neighborhood, sir. Uh, first of all, I think the. Lower uh, graph that is um, uh, 0 0.5, is it the significance it is showing? Not the significance. That is, this is a scale diagram. That means the branches are shown proportionately to the distance score. Okay? Okay. Okay. Proportionately another thing, to sir. The branches are drawn. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, another thing. Uh, in uh, both the trees, uh, in the neighborhood, it is unscaled, where in case of uh, uh, UPGM, it is scaled, scale tree. Yeah, there are many options of drawing it. I'll show it towards end. I'll show you. This is the only one option by default I have shown. But you have changed the tree. You can change it to unscaled tree, scale tree, rooted tree, unrooted tree. Uh, different types of tree can be built based on the same analysis. I'll show it towards end. Okay. We have around nine minutes time. Let me utilize eight minutes time. Let me utilize it for the rest of the thing. Okay. And okay, if sir. I finish in okay, the, 
if 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 uh, our time is finished please click on the second link okay we'll continue okay sir okay sir okay sir okay, sir. okay. now we have shown it uh, how from a nucleotide sequence data from a conserved gene sequence we can draw a tree next we will show how with the help of the protein sequence data we can go for the same kind of analysis so for that in this particular meeting i said only show you how to upload the sequences then thereafter i will discontinue and please open the second meeting and we'll continue thereafter because only few minutes left here okay so now we have got another protein sequence in your shared files i think you know that is test if you click on the test so this is a file another notepad file which contains many protein sequences here instead of the dna sequences we have up, uh, we have already pasted protein sequences of prion of rabbit prion of gorilla prion of chimpanzee like that many different mammalian species along with chicken as a outlier so what is a prion i think most of you know about it prion the full mean, full uh, form is prion is an abbreviation the full form is proteinaceous infectious particle so professor lenstiner discovered it in 1982 for which he was awarded nobel prize and this is the so far smallest infectious particle we do not call it as a organism it is not uh, decided whether it is living or non living but it is a protein simply a protein sequence which is infectious so they are called prions i am not going to detail about uh, these prions but you know prions are normally found in apparently healthy individuals but they do not cause any harm but at certain situations either of the old days or due to certain conditions of loss of immunity they can be activated and the activated prions may cause various diseases say for example in case of human being you might have heard about one disease called crusfeld jacob disease or even mad cow syndrome that occurs in cattle but also can be transmitted to human being similarly midi zaxiecte these are some diseases occurring in sheep so these are all caused by the prion i will not go into detail about that so what we have done here we have downloaded prion sequences of many mammalian species and also we have downloaded or chicken so that we can keep it as a outlier and these protein sequences we will be using for our phylogenetic analysis now so for that again i say that it is a pure notepad file txt file so we have to first convert it to a fasta file for that we will go to file save as on desktop we will be saving it so click on desktop then file name is test but here after test you write dot fas then instead of text document save as type all files okay then click save so it is now saved as a fasta file on the desktop so this is the test file fasta file available here so now as we have only 4 minutes time in this meeting i'll i'll close it now you immediately can log on to the second meeting okay so for this time we will be doing the sequence alignment using pastel x2 so this time we will be using pastel x2 for sequence alignment there is maybe also a procedure to be adopted instead of doing alignment by using mega you can use pastel x2 also so for that we will go to all files and find out cluster x2 already we know how to use cluster
So we will click OK. So the sequence is already here. So this is the FASTA file of the alignment. This is the alignment file. That is why it is showing in this format. You see, dots are there where there is identity and uh, where there is no identity, the particular amino acids are shown. And some places there are gaps. Okay, we'll so can use NPGMA as I said, we have decided that let us take on a version. We we'll use the database. So same thing, bootstrap method. How many times you want to do 500 is already default. So I will say compute. So it is computing creating the phylogenetic tree by making analysis of the alignment data. Because we have to consume in too many sequences, it is taking longer time. Kind of tree, then you check value. That's pretty better. Check value. Once again, you know how to do it. That somebody will create both the methods. And check better value. That will be considered as the final phylogenetic tree. So here, uh, and the phylogenetic tree. Then based on this, you can build the consensus tree. You want to have consensus tree? You have consensus tree. Here you see, gorilla and chimpanzee are showing high level of similarity between them, and they are closer to human being. Then to orangutan. As we know, all these are humanoid apps, gorilla, chimpanzee, human and orangutan. So that's why the prion sequences of all these species are showing close similarity. Now please mind it that this is a tree to show the relationship among the prion sequences of the main species, where chicken is so we can use the density of the These are regarding the evolutionary history of prion protein sequences. Whether human beings have obtained the prion sequences from some other species, related or unrelated, that can be hard. Like that sequence of human prion of gorilla and chimpanzee. So as we know that human beings have evolved from chimpanzee, maybe during the evolutionary history, the human beings have also obtained the prion sequences from chimpanzee. So similarly, orangutan is also a humanoid app. It is also having close relation to human sequence. Similarly, next relative is rhesus monkey, as expected. And the hamster and rat prion sequences are closer to each other. And they are also closer to rabbit than others. Similarly, you can find different clusters being made by grouping of the sequences as per their similarity exists. One is they don't have emblems to the sequence of hamster. So in the evolutionary history of acquiring prion sequences, mouse might not have acquired them easily from some non-million species, or million species. This has to be found out. So it it is although not considered bad, but it is so that the phylogenetic tree places it far away from the sequences. In fact, these phylogenetic mouse sequences are shown to be the origin or the root of origin. They are the first in the evolution, and from them it was important. It is quite interesting. This is real sequences. Again, I emphasize that the evolutionary relationship because real sequence is not a conserved sequence. Now, I tell you how to take up this phylogenetic tree. As you know, we have different types of tree. Display can be changed from one to the other. A rooted tree can be changed to an unrooted tree. A scale tree can be changed to a unscale tree. So, you know, we have to get one of the display, how it will be appearing. But you click here, there are many other options. You see, this is the one now being said in the rectangular form. You can show it in straight form, like this. You can show it so you can show it in a curve form like this. So there are personal differences for difference of 
display. But of course, I also make some data or import information that we do. Similarly, display it in the circle like this. So mitochondrial DNA sequences are usually in a certain view, not in the form of rectangular, rectangular view. If you take into consideration the entire mitochondrial genome. So genome sequences, if you align them and look at them, these are only for a certain There are three different options. Same thing as the tree, according to your own need, you can change the parameter. You can see the answers, how they will appear, their thickness, their length, everything you can change. You can also change the labels, color of the labels. You can also change the scale. Many different changes can be done according to your own. So there are different scale of the phylogenetic tree very people, but not this method for phylogenetic analysis by using the regular form. I would say that what you that will be set in order in the maze or as a PDF file. Say that will be proposed. Give it a PDF file, just click it and save as PDF. Or if you want to give it an image file, give it save as PNG file. So give it a name. Tree, uh, tree. We have a name, tree prion. The PNG file, save. So you can see, uh, we have created this. Uh, this way. Sorry, I didn't see it. So if you have got the specific way, you can give your hand the question. I'm putting the audio now. I'm unmuting them. So if you have got any query, you can raise it and you can. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, first question is that for me, sir. Uh, there are two trees you have joined, and from the tree, we can uh, assign or interpret uh, the, the manner of how the relation between the species is there. Yeah. So, uh, in some of the in uh, original tree, there are some of the uh, uh, trees uh, forming like that. As you have said, the horizontal portion of the tree is showing how the, the difference it is, is between two subclusters. Okay. So, can't we means uh, because uh, from the interpretation itself, we can visualize means, uh, from the data itself, we can visualize that, yeah, there is some difference in between that. And if you go for a scale tree, then there will be no from the visualization itself, we cannot get the interpretation right there. No, from the alignment data, you can say whether differences exist or not. But you cannot say which one is more closer to which. Suppose there were 13 or 14 sequences. You do not know how much they are to each other. Tree will give you a graphical view of the relationship between species, which will help you in interpretation of the data. Yeah, yes, at that time saying, as you have told us in the subcluster, there yeah. are horizontal lines which you are depicting means how their difference is in, in between the subclusters, the two species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we are not giving the horizontal line between the two vertical lines with the from the vertical line, so we will not be directly interpreted from the first look that yes, there is a difference between the two species. Oh yeah, you can I'm saying you can, that. you can show that, but to link among these species, you have to draw the lines, horizontal lines also. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That the lines also. If, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you go for scaled one, then they, there will be equal difference among the two species. So in that case, we'll be not getting the direct interpretation from that. No. Let, let us come back to this. Uh, are you looking at this? It is it is the uh, scene. This diagram hmm. visible at your screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Of course. You see now from here what you can say. Say gorilla and chimpanzee are having the closest relation among themselves. Okay. So that is why they are separated from each other by two horizontal lines. They are of equal length. Okay. But they do have some differences. They are not exactly same. If they are hundred percent identical then these horizontal lines would not have appeared. Then their place would have been here. Okay? Yeah. So, 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's okay, sir. I'm getting what you are saying. Yeah. But if you go in the original tree, in, in that original tree, yeah, so that is, you can see in, uh, in the first one, so you can go to the and the Yeah. yeah. This is my point because it is showing the bootstrap values based on our mm -hmm. applicates. Now you see, mm -hmm. the applicates are done by the bootstrapping method by picking up okay. uh, different numbers of data from the set of data mm -hmm. at different times. Sometimes okay, okay. out of mm -hmm. 13, it will pick up 10, sometimes it will pick up yeah. 12, sometimes it will pick up 7, sometimes it will pick up 5, and every time it will build the tree. And out of 100 times, how a particular branch is appearing, how many times, yeah, suppose uh, the Devanjan, suppose you see yes. beyond hamster and beyond hamster, okay? Node, okay? So, uh, beyond hamster is somewhat more than the prion range. Yeah. yeah, so the, this branch length does not be the evolutionary cycle. Okay, okay, okay. It responds to how many evolutionary, evolutionary changes occurred. Suppose mutation, okay? So from this point, from this point, the prion hamster uh, has undergone more mutation than prion red. Okay. okay, and there are two kind of representations, kilogram and phenogram. So in kilogram, what you are talking about is change three. So this is kilogram, but this is a phenogram. That's my interpretation. But you should not confuse the evolutionary type scale. Yeah, how first uh, the, the, the common answer of prion hamster and prion red. So from this common answer, from this no, prion hamster has undergone more mutation than prion red. This means all this much. So we rely more on the consensus tree. Uh, so the branch lines do not confuse us. Okay. 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 So, yeah, from the, um, not, so, um, yeah. It's okay now. Yeah, yeah, of course, sir. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the alignment scores are built based on the misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then it is it is different sizes of data every time. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. The validation of the phylogenetic tree. And so Because you are going to yes. install a new software, you click yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Anything else? If not, then I once again thank all of you for being with us, and thank you for joining. Thank you, sir. This may be the probably my last lecture to you in this particular course, and uh, tomorrow and thereafter tomorrow, I think. Dr. Pankos Setia will be continuing.